Hi, welcome to Eat Right Now. My name is Jill Jennings. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist at ECU's Department of Family Medicine. Many people who are seeking to better control their diabetes through diet, to lose weight, or even just to feel better overall, often hear about what they can't eat. What I'd like to talk about is what you can eat. So let's get started. Today, I am going to make beans and rice. A little bit fancier than your average beans and rice, maybe. This is my version of beans and rice. So I've got a pan heated here, and probably over medium heat. I want to add just a little bit of heart-friendly olive oil, and add some fresh chopped garlic and onions. And I know that the oil is hot enough because I can hear it. I can hear the onion sizzling. Otherwise, it would just absorb and you'd have to add more oil. If you add more oil, you'll add more calories, you'll add more fat. And that's something that we're trying to avoid here. So this is a way of keeping a bountiful meal, a meat alternative actually. There's no meat products in this. This is beans and rice and vegetables. Let's see, spoon here. So I just wanna saute these lightly until they start to turn golden. And I want to keep an eye on the heat because I really don't want to burn them. Often if you heat garlic, especially fresh garlic over high heat, it turns bitter. So you want to be careful of that. So, just lightly saute them. That really brings out the flavor. Turn up the heat a little bit. Okay, the onions are about to the point that I would like to add some spices. After I add the spices and stir them for a little bit, what that does is it brings out the flavor of the spices. Rather than putting everything in all at once, if I saute in the hot oil and the onions and the garlic, these spices, it will really bring them out. And you can smell them almost immediately. So, we've got some ground cumin here. and a little bit of ground chipotle pepper. It's got a real smoky flavor to it, and it's got some heat. So you wanna be careful with it. You gotta measure your, your heat tolerance. Just a little bit, though, is a nice touch to this dish. And just stir it around for maybe a minute or so. Have one fresh cut jalapeno, and I removed the seeds and the the membranes, the, 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 some of the skin inside that the seeds are attached to. That's really where all the heat comes from. So if you remove those, these are really just going to add flavor versus a lot of heat. But again, if you know that you're sensitive to heat, you know, just maybe cut back. Use a half a jalapeno. And also be careful when you cut any kind of hot pepper. Make sure that you wash your hands afterwards. You wouldn't want to rub your eyes after you've cut up a pepper. This is emitting a very, very strong aroma as the onions cook and the pepper cooks. And now what I would like to add is a little bit of water. I've got black beans and pinto beans. Very rich in fiber and all kinds of other nutrients. And they're incredibly filling. So when you're looking for a meat alternative, you're looking for something just a little bit different, a vegetarian meal of sorts. Beans are a great option. So I'll mix those up real nice. Those are canned beans. Of course, you can soak your own beans. These are canned. One thing about canned beans is that they tend to be a little salty. So what you can do is drain them, rinse them really well, and then put them into a container. So that's why I add my own water. And that really cuts down the sodium level. And that's something that is a valuable thing to do in any kind of cooking. That's a way. And you could apply the same thing to uh, canned vegetables and just drain them, rinse them, 
and then use them. Looks like it needs just a little more water. So what I want to do now is just cook these down. The beans, of course, are already cooked because they were in the can. But I want to get just the flavors to blend, and the onions aren't quite cooked through. I want the flavors to blend and have it thicken up a little bit. For now, I'll leave it on. It's, it's boiling. So put the lid on. While they're cooking, in the meanwhile, what I've got for the rest of the meal is some chopped greens, some chopped mixed greens that you would normally have in a salad. Maybe not chop them, but you would have in a salad. Um, chop those up because I'll put them on the bottom of the plate. I've got some brown rice cooking. This entire kitchen smells like brown rice. A lot of people ask about brown rice. They think, if they've never had it, that it might be boring because white rice is, is delicious and for a lot of people that's the only kind they've had. So people ask me this question, how do I make it taste good? Well, here's one way to combine it with a lot of other tasty foods, highly flavorful foods. But another way, if you were just going to serve it on your own, on its own with something else, a lean piece of meat and, and a vegetable, you can cook it in chicken broth. That's a great way to give it instant flavor. Rather than buying a packaged rice, you could just flavor your own rice. So that's, that's an idea. The reason I encourage the brown rice is because it has more fiber. So if we're looking at losing weight and controlling carbohydrates, both white and brown rice have carbohydrates, of course, but the fiber is going to last with you longer, as is the case with the beans and the vegetables, and a smaller amount of it is going to be more filling for you. So that helps you when you're trying to lose weight. I'm using a rice cooker because it's a, it's a simple tool to have on hand. They're inexpensive, but if you don't have a rice cooker and you have space on your stove, cooking it the old-fashioned way is just as good, and some people prefer it. Your choice. I've also got some fresh-cut tomatoes here. This is the time of year where a lot of people grow their own tomatoes. Here's a good use for it. Here's another way of getting more vegetables into your meal. I've got some cilantro, some chopped yellow pepper, and what I want to note about peppers is whether it's green, red, orange, or yellow, one thing when you're picking a pepper out is when you pick, when you, when you hold it in your hand, think about if it's heavy for its size. If it is, that's a good pepper to pick. And if it doesn't have marks and blemishes around, if the skin's not wrinkly, but you want it to be heavy for its size. And you know it's fresher than one that might be light. And I've got some low-fat cheese here, a Mexican blend of low-fat cheeses. Check on the beans. They're cooking away. They're not quite hot enough at this point, so I'll turn the heat back up. Because I do want them to simmer, I just don't want them to boil too heavily. I've also got some salsa here, and that will be the final thing. Let me take a look here and see how they're doing. I think they're ready. I can tell that they're thickening up some. Beans are softening up a bunch, but they're not breaking down, which is precisely what I want. The onions are clear, which means they're cooked through. And just by the smell of it, I can tell that the flavors are really coming together. One thing I like to do, and there's just a tiny bit of it so that you can't really tell it's in there, but just a dash, a dash of cinnamon, even a little less than a dash. Again, so you can barely tell it's there, but it makes a difference. Oftentimes in Mexican cooking, they use cinnamon, sometimes chocolate, dark chocolate, unsweetened. I like to do the cinnamon. So now, as with any soup or casserole or anything, any stew at this stage, what I want to do is taste it and see if it needs anything. My guess is that it needs a little bit of lime, but let's just make sure. Mm. The beans are the perfect consistency. It's ready. I can get that heat from the jalapeno. But it's not overpowering. It's just you can tell 
there's a fresh pepper in there. And that little bit of smokiness from that from the, to the ground chipotle is very, very nice. It doesn't need salt, but it needs a little lime. I'm adding lime at the end because it will retain its flavor better that way. If I had put it in earlier, it would have disappeared and it might have changed a little bit. So, as we've done before in adding that freshness, that brightness to a dish, add it at the end. If you didn't have a lime on hand, slime doesn't want to give up its juice very well. If you didn't have a lime on hand and you only had vinegar, you could do that with this style of cooking. Okay, I think I'll grab another lime. I've got one right here. That just didn't want to do it. This is what you do. If you can't get juice out of your lime or your lemon or any other citrus, put it underneath your hand I'm on my tippy toes right now. I'm just putting a little bit of weight on it and rolling it. And that sort of softens the fruit. Some people put it in the microwave for a few seconds. Since I don't have that option, I'll do this. Now, as I can tell, it's already softer. There we go. All right. And then I'll have a little bit left over to put on the greens for the, for the meal. So that should do it. The beans are ready. Now what I'd like to do is plate. And one thing I want to point out here is, again, back to wanting to cut back on calories, cut back on fat, but, but increase that sense of abundance. So when you're trying to Reduce your portion sizes. Create with the things that you want to naturally eat more of, fruits and vegetables, vegetables in particular, non-starchy vegetables. Use them as a base and use them as a way of making it seem like you've got a great big, you know, bountiful plate of food. And then just have normal serving of, of the other, normal serving size of the others. So... Lay this down so it's really like eating your salad with your meal all together. Otherwise, if you don't necessarily like this idea, you could just have your salad, dress it on the side with a little bit of lime and just a drizzle of olive oil, and have that before your meal. I'm going to put a little lime on this for extra flavor. And it really doesn't need olive oil as the bed because so many other ingredients will be on top of it. You won't miss it. It doesn't need any salad dressing either. The rice is finished cooking. What I need to do here is just fluff it a bit. Okay, one of the things that's nice about a rice cooker, you never have to worry if it's done or not. It lets you know. So that's why if you're doing a, a lot of cooking for people and when I'm doing this, this kind of thing, it's nice to be able to just put it on and forget about it and know that it will let me know when it's done. So... I'm going to have a serving size of rice, about a third of a cup. And certainly, if you didn't have brown rice on hand, you could use white rice. Again, the carbohydrate content is the same. But the benefit from the brown rice is it has extra nutrients because the outside hasn't been taken off. And it's got fiber, which is going to help you with feeling fuller longer. Then, some beans. See already the plate is, is looking like, wow, that's a big plate of food. I thought I was trying to lose weight. But there's really, that's just less than a half a cup of beans, a third a cup of rice, but it's on top of this big bed of beans. So it makes it seem like you're, you've got this uh, meal in abundance. Got some cheese here. I think I'll put that on next just so that give it a chance to melt on top of the very hot beans couple of tablespoons. For those of you who would love your cheese melted and bubbling, you could always just put this in the microwave for 30 seconds or so. Some peppers. See, it's easy to get a lot of your vegetables in an entire day in this meal alone.
Okay. And vegetables are naturally low in calories, no fat, virtually no carbohydrates, the non-starchy ones, some fresh tomatoes. So this is a good meal to help you help you control the amount of carbohydrates you're eating at a meal and the consistency from meal to meal. Tomatoes, one thing I like to add at the end, some cilantro. It looks like parsley a bit. Good thing about cilantro is that you don't have to worry about the stem. The stems are not bitter, so you can just wash it, pat it dry, pull it as much off of it as you want, chop it, and sprinkle it on. It's highly flavorful, like basil, so it adds a lot to a dish. There's the cilantro, a little bit of salsa, whichever salsa you like. However much, up to a quarter of a cup you could use. Sprinkle that around, maybe a little on the top here. A serving size of chips. One other thing, I've got this yogurt out just to bring up the point that a lot of people like sour cream with this style of eating and this style of food. Sour cream is high in calories, it's high in fat. And the low-fat versions have a lot of things added to them. So a nice alternative is the very thick Greek yogurt. It tastes nearly identical to sour cream. So you could do a dollop of that on the top. And you have it. A vegetable-rich food that's good for your good for your diabetes good for you good for your weight loss efforts good for your health overall and a few chips scattered around voila i hope you enjoy if you're interested in making this dish yourself please check out our website Otherwise, eat right now, eat right tomorrow, eat right every day.